question for me. Welcome. Got a great turnout here tonight. Looking forward to a good demonstration and uh, seeing some of the pieces we have out here. It's been uh, an event-filled month here that we'll be reporting out to you here. Uh, I think there are two new members present tonight. Sergio Vasquez and, and Charles Fry. Charles Fry. We have a couple more that have uh, <coughs> talked about the application and just aren't here tonight. Or this guy isn't moved. <laughs> okay. First item of business is uh, our nominations for officers to replace the uh, uh, treasurer and vice president. We do have uh, two people who have uh, agreed to run for it. The floor is open until the next meeting for anybody else who wants to run. Um, I'll go ahead and acknowledge John Ziegler over here operating on the uh, computer uh, has agreed to serve as vice president. And Rick Atkins, he of the multicolored uh, wood, uh, will be our treasurer. Let's hope he doesn't mingle our funds with Atkins' debt uh, services. Yeah, <laughs> we're close. Yeah. Um, so the election will be at the beginning of the meeting next month. Um, if any other candidates wish to uh, make their candidacy known, let me or one of the board members know, please. We're now accepting dues for 2024. The dues are actually due by the beginning of our February meeting, but the earlier we get them in, the happier we are. No big surprise there. So you can, uh, $30 again this coming year, uh, make it out to Lancaster area wood turners and get it to John Kelsey. Yeah. If you have it with you, to, if you have to anybody, anybody who's a new member who pays up now is good right through the end of the year. Yeah. So we have uh, two guys here. Yeah, one of them has paid. <laughs> okay, the, uh, the tool sales. I've been advertising stuff and selling stuff from a former member for about the past month and a half. Anyhow, except for uh, the Walt Miter saw, which I would love to get rid of at a walk away price. Uh, got a 12 inch miter saw. Other than that, all the tools are sold. The, uh, I forget the entire net, somewhere over $5,000. And uh, of that, the club gets 988 and a complete grinder stand. I mean, grinder setup. It's the uh, low speed grinder with two CBN wheels and a complete. Uh, one way set of uh, uh, jigs, branding jigs. Uh, next item, I'm not really sure how to deal with. A gentleman uh, contacted Mike Junkerth and uh, he bought a lathe uh, of sorts. He bought a lathe and discovered only after he had it. It's still brand new that he has uh, the beginnings of Parkinson's or some form of tremor that he can't use it. And he wants to donate it. And the thing is, it's one of these little wind machines. And dirty. You know, it's got like a four inch clearance. You can turn 80 inch diameter yeah. stuff on it. It's got number one Morse tapers on it. It's a. Uh, it is what it is. And I, uh, I don't think it really has a place here on the floor, um, but I hate to go ahead and say, yeah, we'll take it and turn around and sell it. So if anybody can think of uh, a home for it where it'll see some use, uh, he has tools for it too, he said. So we'd like to uh, just be the, a through way to take it off his hands or have him give it directly to some other entity. 
you thought of, thought about contacting Randy Smith up at uh, Susquehanna. He's a special returner for pens and stuff. He may oh, have for pens. Pen. And he may be I know somebody thought about that. Yeah, I'm here. Randy, did you hear that? Yes, I did. Well, you've been contacted now. <laughs> okay, I'll, Randy, I'll uh, I'll give you the I'll send you an email as a CC when I reply to the guy. I told him I put it out to the club tonight. Okay. Uh, now the big item uh, on the Amtrak display. I'm going to let Tom come up and uh, take the floor here and explain to you what's going on there. Hello, everybody. So I see we have a lot of uh, show and tell. We have a lot of challenge stuff. I'll try to go through this quickly, but it was an interesting process to say the least. So uh, um, one of our members, Mike Junker, I don't know him. I'm relatively new to the club. Oh, there's Mike. Okay. Oh, I do know you. I didn't place, didn't place the face with the name. Okay. And your son builds guitars. Yes. Yes. All right. So anyway, uh, it seems apparently a year and a half or two years ago, you sent it, uh, you heard about this yeah. uh, promotion. So you wrote up, Mike wrote up a, uh, a proposal to the, uh, to the arts council and it was accepted. Now the way that way it works from there is, uh, we were contacted by a woman named Molly Kirchhoff, and she's the program manager of public art and urban design for Lancaster City. And there are about five other titles attached to it. I truncated it. Uh, she, she asked the club to prepare a 15 minute Zoom meeting to discuss our proposed display. And then this meeting was gonna be recorded, that 15 minute uh, meeting was gonna be recorded. And then all the other potential candidates were gonna have theirs recorded. And then these recordings would go to a panel who would select four finalists. And those four finalists would each be offered a three month stint in uh, two large display cases at the Amtrak station in Lancaster City. So the executive committee met and uh, to prepare this for this interview. And then uh, we, what we did is we just talked about the club, you know, what, to, how do we focus the, everything in 15 minutes? So after a few discussions on Zoom, Barry and I were asked to represent the law, law LAW for the interview. So what we did is we met with Molly on a Zoom type meeting, it wasn't really a Zoom, but uh, we uh, called about 40 photographs that the membership had submitted over what the last couple of years probably uh, through our copy house show and tell, through our in-house show and tells. So we had the 40 photos of representative type turnings. Um, we also shared the club history a little bit and we focused on some of our charity efforts that have been going on and then other facets of the club to show that it's just not a fly-by-night operation, even though we look like one sometimes. Now. And then two days later, we were informed uh, of our uh, selection to exhibit for uh, one of the three month uh, stints. So we have a time slot. It, it's either gonna be April, May, June, or July, August, September, if I understood it right. So if there's any questions on the process, I mean, that was the easy part, I guess. But the next steps are uh, we, the, uh, the executive group, need to meet with Molly on Thursday. I think uh, Barry, virtual. John, and I. Virtual meeting. Yeah, we're going to have a virtual meeting with Molly, uh, the director person, on Thursday at 1 o'clock. And then we can ask her questions. Uh, we, you know, we can sort of finalize, smooth everything out, all the logistics involved for this display. Now, what we need to figure out is, uh, you know, these cases are what, uh, seven feet? Two and a half by 10. Two and a half by 10 feet. So they're narrow. And the way Barry, Barry went out to uh, recon, and apparently the, the door opens on the end of the case and not the front of the case. So <laughs> somebody with 10 foot arms. Who's gonna... <laughs> so we're going to, I think what we're going to do at this point is we're going to solicit turnings from the membership. And they can either be existing turnings or they can be new turnings that you might want to create over the next couple of months. And then Molly also shared that uh, when you're selected to Thomas. Sorry, just clarify, two and a half feet tall by two and a half feet long? Two and a half feet wide, 10 feet long. How tall? And they're probably as tall as I am. It's about six but feet But they're, they have oh, like, you. So yeah, they're shelves than I am. in the cases. Say eight, it again. Eight. There's standard shelves and stuff in the cases. No, there's, some, there's like man. plinths. Yeah. So you can raise your things. Oh, off the floor. Okay. Most of the stuff will be displayed like about waist level. We're gonna we're gonna walk it up here. 
<laughs> yeah, but it's set up here. We won't, we're not going to do the setup for the first time in the case. Sure. I understand. I'm just yeah. trying to think about work and yeah. people don't yeah. need work and therefore what is the whole And that's something that one of your tall weenie things will work. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of the things we need to work out with Molly when it's we have It's fairly girthy as well. I don't you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's really thin. Don't ball. just limit it to one dimension there, Tom. It's very, it's very fragile. It's very yeah. fragile, though. Uh, devolution. Like, I, I think one thing, when I submitted the proposal first, the first round, um, they were surprised and very excited about the fact that some folks here like to use wood that is either only from here or has historical context from here. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, I showed them pictures of the stuff that I guess Doug had over at the Lancaster Historical Society's yeah, yeah. gift shop. That's interesting, yeah. And I think doing that, because that train station is the second busiest train station in the state. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, by far. You might want to make a note of that I, as, as, as one of our... So what he's saying is, like, on his initial contact, the organization was very interested in turners that use local wood, like from Wheatland, you know, some Lancaster County type wood from a maybe historical site. So we didn't really include that in our ideas, but we could easily. That didn't come, that didn't come up uh, or was suggested. No, she didn't mention it, but. Uh, I just think they were very interested in that and or, I mean, rather than just saying this is a cherry. Sure, bowl, they would be. Say, hey, this yeah, is, yeah. you know, cherry that was. Yeah obtained from South Carolina or whatever. Yeah. If you know the provenance of your wood, right. I would include it with your, dis your description. So we'll do a raid on Wheatland some night with chainsaws. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> I saw you Thomas's know. hand. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Doug. You can go first. Oh, go ahead, Doug. You, you don't need to do a raid on Wheatland. Just call me because I got a whole bunch of it in my, in my <laughs> basement that I'd like to well, that maybe get rid of some as a challenge. <laughs> he, he could supply some wood from, uh, is it Wheatland? Yes. Yeah, so Wheatland. he can supply some Wheatland wood and do it as a challenge. Is that ambrosia maple? Stuff? Yeah. Well, unless you don't like ambrosia maple berry, the way you're saying it with your arm. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that ambrosia maple joined the club. Yeah. You came walking out of the club when I was walking in late on a rainy night. Yeah. And you had an arm full of ambrosia, ambrosia maple. And you said, here, you want a piece? And it was something that somebody had chainsawed at a 45 degree angle, two thirds of the way through, just still sitting in my shop waiting to find an idea. <laughs> I'll take I, that I from folks meet really well. Yeah. Go ahead, Thomas. Um, so it just makes me think there are at least two, three club members that I'm aware of who are either uh, past curators, do display of their own wares for a living, and or are magazine and book editors in the room that might be able to help curate right. the cases and, and, that was another point. and appropriately tag the work and put this kind of information in in a way that would attract the viewer beyond the pieces. So and that's, just, that's just the next it. talking point. So we're going to get together and we're going to have to make a decision about how we're going to curate the pieces. We're only going to be able to accept X number of pieces. And if we get 40, maybe we can do 40, but it doesn't seem likely based on what the thing, but that's what we have to figure out and just stay tuned for that. And the also, also John has volunteered to make the appropriate uh, nomenclature tags for Science. each piece. Okay. So yeah, everything's sorry, consistent John. and looks good. There's, labeling. there's space for some explainer placards. Uh, we want to have uniform labeling of who the maker is, what the woods are. Yeah. Uh, and I've already agreed to and laugh. Yeah. Be, be, be a perfect one for it. So let's see. Yeah. So we're gonna we'll create that process and we will, you know, share it with the group as it evolves. Uh, you know, it's just. I think that's the rat. Way to go, guys. Yeah, yeah. great. Well, well, Thanks for doing nice. that. One of the things I would like to suggest is that we, uh, the executive committee should not be the people that uh, that say yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Uh, I'd like to see some volunteers. And uh, Thomas, I'd like to include you uh, as far as having a familiarity with uh, art and display. Uh, and I, I would, with my mind, I'd say, yeah, we can fit that in there. And, you know, never mind what that is, it fits. Uh, but if we can get a couple of people that uh, don't mind bearing the burden of uh, saying yes and no, if we get too many submittals. 
and Molly suggested that you are certainly welcome to, you know, say your stuff's for sale. So it's an opportunity for Turner's, especially professionals. Would, would it be club-like to propose that the club, like, see all the potential pieces and vote on them? Would Possible. that be a, a you way? Can set, someone can set up, like, an online system. I mean, where yeah, can... I mean, we could curate it, or we could let the club decide what they want to represent them. I, I'm just asking the question. I'm not suggesting. It's possible. I don't, I don't have the skills to do it. I don't know if any of you guys have the skills. Anyone have the skills to do an online? My, there you go, Mike. We just need the pictures. Yeah, okay. We do the voting and... Well, I think that's a pretty good idea. Just remember, though, this, we only have one of those. The second one is all for Barry's jigs. <laughs> oh. oh, who's going to curate those? <laughs> so then we'll include Mike too in these discussions to see what his ideas sure. would be like then. Okay. So we'll include Mike then in the further discussions to figure out where we're going, what the next steps I mean, are. I, to, to Barry's proposal, I would be more than happy to participate, okay. but just throwing it out there that it might also be a way for the club. To... Thank you. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think our next uh, move then would be to present what we sort of decide to the membership next month. Okay. Now, it's a pretty short few, as, as Tom has said, uh, this Tom has said, the uh, virtual meeting with Molly Kirchhoff is uh, two days from now. So between now and then, if you do have either questions or ideas, uh, send them to Kelsey, Tom, or me uh, to make sure they get brought up at the uh, at the meeting, uh, I do have one suggestion uh, that if we if we do an online uh, uh, oh. photo show, uh, we should add a QR code to the yes, display. Yeah. In other words, to keep the piece anonymous. Not necessarily so that people, if they want to view the photo show, all they have to do is point their camera at it and go click oh, oh, and oh, he oh, means visitors the photo to, the, show. to the train station could shoot a QR oh, code oh, and see, get oh, to a good. website where pictures of our work yeah, is displayed. Okay. That's possible. And that's just right, John. You can, yeah, we can do that. Right? Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> it's a good idea. Ideally, just bring them to the home page. Any other questions yeah. from the audience or the Zoom? How would it go to if you if you want to buy some? Somebody's walking through the train station, sees that price tag, and wants to buy it. Well, that's going to be dependent on what we choose to put on the tags. You know, there's going to be some contact information, maybe your email address, something like that. We'll figure that out. Uh, uh, Molly has already told us that the pieces that it will be on display as well as the maker's other stuff that they may have available uh, will be available for sale. I mean, it, it can be sold if the maker wants to. And if you have a piece that you exhibit, I don't know that we're supposed to put a price tag on display to reduce it to that, but- uh, Maybe we can find some of this out at the meeting. On right, that's fair, yeah. yeah. And something that, looks like can, Oh yeah, and what is it? Nine hundred. Either nine hundred or nine twenty-five. They. Yeah. So the benefit of the club is there's actually a stipend paid to, to the club of a little over nine hundred dollars. So we benefit from that as well. Which means nobody has to pay dues next year. <laughs> <laughs> and wait till you see the Christmas party. <laughs> so we're hoping for the later of the two middle that we so that. People have like six months to get ready yeah. for it mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, and turn great stuff. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And I also want to add that one of the uh, 35 or whatever pictures that we showed was one that was uh, uh, one of Toby's pieces. We're going to be doing the demonstration tonight. Where are you? Oh, right here. Uh, and it was that. That bowl that you submitted when I asked for pictures, and as I was going by them, I'm not sure if it was the color contrast or just the startling nature of it overall. But she uh, she said, "Wait, would you go back to that one?" And so I don't know how her whole team did with it, but that one and uh, Thomas, I think yours that I have a hard time describing it, but the one that you submitted that had a 
almost like a belted like inlay on top. Was it gold? You gave me that picture that was like 90 megabytes or something. That, uh, <laughs> I only take high quality photos. Yeah, yeah, it was a high quality photo. You, know, you have a. What is it? it was all compressed by you me. You have a tall because... wiener. You need a good photo. Is that... <laughs> Anyhow, I really think that uh, she was expecting to see like brown round things. Yeah, yeah. And when she saw uh, carving and pyro work, stains, embellishment. Uh, that really showed her there's a lot more than just, okay, here's another bowl, here's a chalice, or whatever. <laughs> and it, it struck me that that, along with our charity work, and I think the, uh, the fact that even though we have none of us here tonight, we do have eight female members, uh, are key things on uh, what an organization of today should look like. And... John, treasurer's report and yeah, treasurer's report. Item for voting. Pardon? Is that and an item for voting? Sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, treasurer's report. Let's see. We started October with twenty-seven hundred and two dollars and ninety-seven cents. We spent fourteen dollars and twenty-five cents on a book of deposit slips for the bank account. We got a donation of 80 bucks in revenue for the Lay Fund. Barry raised $988 selling Bob Andrews shop off into the into the uh, club fund. And I had a, a bunch of miscellaneous cash lying around from wood sales here to the total of $124. So we took in $1,192 and we end up with a balance as of today of $3,880.72. Um, so the club's in reasonable financial shape. Um, we we will we have our singular biggest expenditure coming up, and that's the charitable donation we make to a, a, a local charity here in New Holland that uh, helps homeless people. Uh, but we do that in, in lieu of rent, in the name of the Kaufman family. Uh, and I guess it's it's a last year we did a thousand dollar donation. This year. Um, I'm moving right now that we donate twelve hundred dollars to that uh, to that charity, and I'm asking uh, for a vote to agree with that twelve hundred dollars, and I'll cut the check this week. I'll second it. Questions, comments? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I don't see uh, same thing out on the screen. Everybody's good. Okay. Thank you. That's treasury report. <laughs> Even though we'll have to get a vote each year, we are expecting that as long as we are here, uh, since uh, the coffins do allow us to, we're here not just rent free, but utilities are paid for, the heat and air conditioning when it gets hot in the summer, uh, we're living here like squatters. And uh, so we have to annually make good for that. Uh, this, this is a good way of doing it. We're donating in, in uh, Coffin Kitchen's name to this charity. We have open shop this Saturday, the 11th, from 9 to noon. Um, those of you who are, who are new, uh, you can show up either with a project in mind or just come to watch. Uh, John Kelsey will be demonstrating using the uh, roughing gouge. If anybody else uh, wants to demonstrate a tool, that's great. If you want to come here and try and uh, turn something, we have uh, four operational lays here. Uh, you can have at it. What, what times are those? I'm sorry? What time was that? Nine to noon. Nine to noon Saturday. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> 